Hello, you're listening to the broadcast from the New Beginning Worship Center in Greenback, Tennessee. We're located on Highway 411, just three buildings from the intersection of Highways 411 and 95. Our email address is simply our initials, followed by the word mailbox at gmail.com, which is nbwcmailbox at gmail.com. We meet Sundays for teaching at 10 a.m., followed by worship services at 11 a.m. and 6 p.m. We also meet midweek at 7 p.m. on Wednesdays. Brother Marcus Severance is a pastor. Now, let's listen in to the message. Amen. Will you stand with me and stretch your hands this way? Amen. Father, I want to thank you. God, that you are no respecter of persons. God, you give grace to the humble. Lord, you said in the proud, you said empty away, empty handed. Lord, tonight I want to thank you, Lord, that you've come to share this word, God, to minister life. And most of all, God, you've come tonight to help your people. Lord, I thank you for this church and this Bible-believing believers, God. They don't only believe uh, you, God, but they, they believe everything about your word, God. And I'm thankful tonight because you are the word of the living God. You are the word made flesh and you dwell among us. Lord, I want to, first of all, I want to acknowledge you in this service. I give you all the praise for what you're going to do, all the glory and all the honor. I thank you, Lord, for revelation. I thank you, Lord, for your presence. And most of all, God, I thank you, Lord, for the love that I feel that shed abroad in the hearts of your people tonight. Lord, there's no one here, God, no one, the Bible said, that's justified, not a one. No man living, God, is justified in your sight. No one. But God, you're so good. And Lord, tonight I want to thank you now for this word. Now, God, we ask you to bless your people. God, we thank you for what you've already done and what you're going to do in this service tonight. God, you said if there be one. And God, I know there's one here tonight. I know it that you're going to bless. And Lord, I give you the praise for it. And the church said amen. You may be seated. The Lord tonight has completely changed the message because some of somebody that is in this house tonight. And God wants to speak to you and I want to talk and I'm, going, I'm not going to keep you long because I know God wants to move. I know exactly what He's going to do in some aspects. But I want you to know tonight that, that, that we serve a God that, that loves the one that's gone astray. Somebody say Amen. The Bible talked about, all through the Bible, the Scripture talks about how God would, he would go out of His way. I want you to know that God is not trying to keep you out. He's trying to bring you in. Somebody say amen. God will go out of His way to make room for you because He loves you that much. He loves you. The Bible tells us in, in the book of John, the third chapter, that God so loved you. He so loved the world. That's you and I that He sent His only begotten Son, that whosoever uh, would believe in Him would not perish, amen, but have everlasting life. And that's what I want you to focus on tonight is that, that God will never leave you in the place that you're in. Whether you got there on your own, whether you were deceived, whether the devil put you there, it doesn't matter why you're there. The thing that matters is that God is going to go out of His way to bring you tonight back to Him. I want to be in the presence of God. I hope you do. I want to be where God wants me to be. Will somebody say amen? amen? And you look through the Scripture about God. He, he said in the Scripture, God Himself speaking, talked about how that there was all these sheep and, and, and 99 of them, you know, I talked the other day about how their halo was so perfect and they were so quote-unquote looked so right, but there's always one. I've been that one. We've all somewhere in our life. Come on, somebody say amen. We've all gone astray. We've all missed it. Every one of us. And, and God said that He would leave those 99. I'm so glad today, Bill, that He didn't leave us in that place we used to be in. He could have allowed every one of us to perish, but He didn't. But He came and He found that one. That was you and I. He found that one 
that was out of the way. And you know what? He didn't, he didn't criticize them like we will. He didn't bash them like we'll do, like the church a lot of times will do. But he picked him up over. The, the shepherd picked the lamb, hallelujah, picked that sheep up over its shoulders. I thank God tonight that God is carrying us to that place. He's carrying you not because you deserve it, not because I deserve it, but because he is God and he is good. Will somebody say amen? And so as, as I was thinking tonight, I was thinking about this particular scripture over in the book of John. And John, to me, of all the books, represents more of the love of God than, than any book in the Bible because it shows God's mercy, it shows God's love. But we all are familiar of the passage of, of the woman that God said that I have to go through Sychar. It was a parcel of ground. And there in this particular place, listen to me, there was a well. It was the best the world had. It was the best that was in that area at that time. There was a well, and it was called Jacob's Well. And Jesus, he wasn't going to embarrass. Jesus doesn't embarrass people. He doesn't, he doesn't criticize people. So in this particular passage of Scripture in John 4, he told his disciples to go into town, and he sent them away, and he did it for a reason. You know what? Sometimes God just needs to send everything away in our life so He can speak to us once again. Will somebody say amen? He sent the elders away. He sent the bishops away. He sent the preachers away. He sent His disciples away because He knew that there was somebody that was on their way to that well. He already knew about her life. He already knew where she had been, what she had done. He knew the conversation, thank God, that He was going to have with it. It was going to be a conversation Hallelujah, that was going to change her life. And you know what? When God begins to speak to you and you really begin to listen, let me tell you right now, it'll change your life. It'll turn your life around. It'll bring you back to what I call from, from the pig pen, amen, all the way back to the palace because He is good. God will never leave you in the hands of the devil. God will never leave you by yourself. He will always come. He will always bring a word. He will always come and find you. He will sit and wait on you. He will sit and draw you to Him. Thank God Almighty that, I, that I've got water deeper. I've got water better than anything this world's got to offer. Jesus said, I'll, I'll give you water, hallelujah, that's springing up into everlasting life. I'll give you water tonight that you'll drink of, hallelujah, that you'll never thirst again. I'll give you water, hallelujah, that you'll take a sip of and out of your bellies, he said, will flow rivers of water, hallelujah, springing up to the King of Kings. Somebody give him praise in the Lord of Lords. He was waiting on this woman. Don't you know tonight that God loves you? Amen. Come on, I feel it. He loves you right where you are. Amen, brother. He loves you. He, I, I don't know about you, but I don't ever remember ever, even when I missed it, and I've missed it big in, in past, in, in, in my life, when I was, I missed it big, and God never criticized me. He just told me the truth to bring me back to Him. That's our God. That's the God that I know. I don't know the God you know, but that's the God I serve. He's the God that loves us. And you know what? When we need to be loved the most, we need to be loved the most when we're the most unlovable. When we, when we do the worst things in life and things aren't going good and there's nobody here, not the preacher, not anybody that's lily white. There is nobody without sin. There is no person justified by their works or by their preaching or by their church attendance or by anything they do. But thank God Almighty, He went to the cross. He died on that cross to forgive us and to shed His blood. And I need forgiveness more than one time a day. I need forgiveness more than one time a year. I've got to come to God and I want to go to God and God wants you to come but you know the great thing about God is a whole lot of times you won't even have to come to him he'll come looking for you amen he'll come looking for you to draw you out of that mess to draw you out of that place to bring you back brother Bill to the place he put you on solid ground he put you on the right foundation and there ain't a devil in hell if you'll make up your mind if you'll get back on the rock hallelujah I want to be on the rock and I glory to God he can put you on that rock and your life can be changed forever so here comes this woman and she's had a troubled life her life had not been easy her life had been hard 
and you go all the way back in some of your lives and, and you look at, at where you were and look wh where God found you and look where you are now. Look how far, come on, my God, I'm so thankful to you tonight, God, how far He's brought you. Where were you 30 years ago, 40 years ago, 20 years ago? Look how far, hallelujah, that our God has brought us. You know why? Because once He gets a hold of you, he, He's got a grip on you, praise God. He's got the greatest grip in the universe. You're not going to slip away. I said, you're not going to slip away. He done had this woman at the well, Joey saying. He done had a hold of her. He done grabbed a hold of this woman. And he began to talk to her about her life. And he was telling her, you know what? You're empty on the inside. I want you to know, not Brother Hell, that if I don't drink of this water that Jesus is talking about right here, I'm empty on the inside. You're empty on the... There is a water, praise God. There are things that God will give you that nobody else can give you. You can't fill it up with anything else. That'll satisfy. But God said, if you'll come to me, I'll fill you up to overflowing. I'll fill you up, hallelujah, so much that you'll never want anything but me again. Hey, somebody, my God, you'll never want anything else. You don't want the devil anymore because he ain't got anything good anyway. You won't want his junk. You won't want his stuff. God said, don't worry about the devil. Don't worry about your past. But listen to what I'm telling you right now as I'm sitting on this well. He said, I know all about you. He told this woman, I know all about your life. He knew that somewhere in her life they began to talk about worship. She began to talk about how she used to worship God on this mountain. Don't you think God didn't know that somewhere probably when this lady was probably young before she fell into the trap of the devil that she was a worshiper God. She was a, and God began to bring her back. Let me tell you something right now. When the devils bother you, start worshiping God. Start twirling around again. Start shouting this praise. And the devil won't bother you no more, Brother Gary. He'll, you'll run him out of dodge because you've got authority. Praise God. If I was to walk up and try to rob a place and you ripped out a 357 Magnum and put something in my face, that devil's gone. Hallelujah to God. If you begin to praise God, I said to worship God. I said to shout to God. I said to shout victory glory to God. To God. That devil's going to leave. Are you going to run that fox out of the chicken house? You're going to run the dogs on the long way down the road and you're going to make them, and they ain't going to just be running with their mouths shut. They're going to be running with their tails tucked and yelping, glory to God, all the way away. Hallelujah. Will oh, somebody give our God praise? So God goes on and he talks to this woman about her life. And he's setting her up for victory. He wasn't setting her up to embarrass her or to destroy her. Listen, he wasn't setting her up to trip her up. He was setting her up to pick her up. Amen. He was setting this woman up to bring her back to where he knew that she truly wanted to be. And all it took was one word from the king. It don't take but one word from God. Brother Bill, it don't take but one touch to change our life. It don't take but one word and one touch and one move of God. Hallelujah. When God gets in your life and he does that for you, you'll never be the same, Brother Jesse. Amen. Can I hear an amen? Can I hear an amen? You'll never be the same when God gets in your life. So then... I love what he said to her. He said, go, go call your husband. She said, I don't have no husband. And Jesus said, you've said very well. <laughs> He's getting ready. Come on. That's the way he does. Come on, somebody. I feel the Holy Ghost. My God, raise your hands. I feel the power of God right now. He said, thou hast well said. Yeah. In other words, you know what? He's saying to this woman starting right now, it ain't going to be no more lies in your life. You have told me the truth. You ain't got no husband. He said, you ain't going to hide this from me. He said, not only do you not have no husband, he said, you've had this many of them, and the one you're with now is not your husband. And he turned around, and he told her, and that woman said, my God, you're God, and you're the Messiah. And he said, hello, here I am. Right. Oh, glory to God. He was setting her up to pick her up. He was setting her up to deliver her up. Come on. He was setting her up, praise God, to change her up again. My God. She was tired of living that life. When you get tired of living that life, you don't have to have no preacher coax you. 
Come on, somebody. You don't have to have no preacher talk to you or come knock on your door or come visit you and hold your hand. When you may have made up mind and you've had enough and God is talking to you, you'll come running to the well. Hallelujah to God. You'll come running to the water. You'll come running to him, hallelujah. And you'll say, I want you, God. I need you, God. I don't want to pass. I need a touch from you. And God says, how much you want? Open up here, I am. He'll just pour it out. That's Brother Harold Sunday night.